Hello there, internet. Magua here, and I got another list of Rune Terror video for you guys today. And today we are gonna showcase some good old karma. I know a lot of you are very excited about this. Kappa, you know, Karma is one of the champions that I've actually, uh, honestly, the best term to say is just baby raged about the most. Uh, I've complained quite a bit of Karma in the past, like a, a little bit less than a year ago. And ever since, you know, new expansions came out and the card pool increased, Karma kind of like slowly but surely fell out of flavor and she was nerfed obviously to six mana a while back and now she's not really very prevalent in the meta she's always finding some sort of niche here and there but then she gets replaced with something else that's a little bit faster right and i'm okay with this i'm not asking for a karma buff because i think karma is inherently a very toxic champion like when she starts going off it feels really bad because it just it's kind of like a railing soul in, in, in a way right it's just value value vomit value value i will never run out of cards ever and as long as i have another karma in my hand i will not mill myself either so yeah you pretty much just lose at a certain point with her but she is very slow and getting to that situation is the tricky aspect of karma decks it always has been and i really like karma combined with your boy aphelios because this is obviously the legends of aphelios card game and we want to be playing aphelios as much as possible in his own card game, as we're going to combine Aphelios with Karma in what is a deck that is centered around the Veiled Temple. This is a very good deck, a very good example of how this card can be abused, and I'm very excited to share this with you. I know this is not for everybody, I call it Twilight Degeneracy, because this is, you know, a pretty degenerate deck. Some people just like playing more straightforwardly or faster, really. <laughs> this deck takes a while every game, just keep that in mind, so it may not be the most efficient deck to, like, actually climb ladder with, at least swiftly, so, you know. Take that into account. Anyways, we got uh, these two champions with this landmark right here in a deck comprised of recall effects, stuns, card draw, and then uh, value engines such as Eye of the Dragon and obviously the likes of Aphelios. The win condition is to combine Aphelios with Karma in the late game. We can start utilizing uh, certain moon weapons like the uh, Infernum and have it be cast twice, right? So get plus four attack and overwhelm, which is really neat. And uh, the idea is to go over the top with either elusive and or overwhelm units, slowly but surely, no need to rush it as you stabilize, stabilize, disrupt anything that would uh, affect your board too heavily. And obviously always keep Karma alive if you can. Veil Tempest, uh, Veil Tempest, sorry. Veil Temple really does help with that. For both Karma and Aphelios, due to the structure of the deck, Karma and Aphelios are the strongest units that we have on the board, unless we have generated something else throughout Solari Priestess or Star Shaping, which means that they will be the buff targets for Veil Temple. So the more, the earlier we play Karma, in this deck we actually want to play Karma relatively early and use Veil Temple to make up for a little bit of that tempo loss uh, earlier and have uh, some sort of disruption in the backup like deny or even nopify to protect our karma because once we start pumping up karma through the veil temple eventually through the first buff alone she's already a 5-4 which means that get excited gotcha and like a bazillion other cards that deal three damage will not be able to kill her anymore and the bigger she gets the more your opponent will have to rely on that like really efficient removal like vengeance for example and that's why we're running a full set of deny homecoming is also extremely underrated as a card i really really love this card right now it actually has some really good utility in this deck like we can use it to bounce back solari priestess or the tail of the dragon to get back our concussive palm it is a way for us to deal with something immediately because by combining target and ionia we really don't have damage we don't have mystic shot get excited we don't have grasp of the undying you know withering whale any sort of pings we lack because of this region combination so we need homecoming to stop twisted fate from leveling up to stop anything that can just snowball out of control and alongside hush it gives us some really good control over what the opponent is doing but it's not the best answer for spread out board states which is why the dragon sisters are very important for our initial turns in the match and ladies and gentlemen, that is the deck list right there. I want to keep this deck tech short and sweet. Uh, I think I explained the more vital aspects of the deck, and I think the gameplay itself will uh, explain the rest. I do face off against mid-range, aggro, and late game control. So I got all sort of that all sort of diverse matchups for you guys today. 
And yeah, very excited about this video. I think it's pretty good in, in that regard. Uh, I, I gotta let you guys know before I leave that um, there will not be any video tomorrow, nor the day after that. Probably, most likely, yes, uh, because I'm going to be away. I'm bulk recording and I managed to get videos up until Saturday. This is the last one and I just, because uh, I'm going to be away for in Madrid because I'm, I'm, we're looking for a new apartment. We're going to be moving from Malaga to Madrid uh, for several reasons, you know, more than anything, professional <laughs> reasons. And it's important for us to be in the capital for this year onwards. So we got to get that rolling, even in the middle of, of a pandemic, I know. But I, we will be taking all the precautions necessary, not only for ourselves, but for others as well. And that's where I'll leave it at. Love ya. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoy the games. Give a like. Why the fuck not? And I'll see you guys soon. I was going to say, let's get in for a series of 50-minute games. But we are facing Draven Jinx round one. So that changes... How fast this game will go for sure. I gotta do a full mulligan here. Because I need to find my units. Conquest of Palm is also very important here. This can be one of the more tricky matchups, right? Because we're there's not that much aggro running around right now. So this is not a matchup that we're gearing for, right? Even though we do have Eyes of the Dragon, we have means to stay alive. We have quite a bit of health gain in this deck, but we lack a little bit of tempo early on, and we can be a little bit overwhelmed, but with the Dragon Sisters, I feel safer. Unless, you know, they turn one Zanai Yurking into like a bazillion bodies on, on the board, that could happen. I, I assume he has... Okay. Pass here. It's Draven time. Because his palm is good there, it stops him. I'm gonna play Aphelios. You could very easily have access to vision, which is definitely concerning. That's right way too much damage. I was worried about a vision. But being able to stay over over 10 is really neat. Uh, more floods. I'm gonna play Slayer Priestess, get an extra blocker here, as I'm I'm not gonna interact with my opponent's board just yet, because the reality is uh, my opponent's board is is completely full, right? So he has to sacrifice something, and this allows me to pass here. Five, okay. I can pass here.
I can play this to try to preserve Aphelios healthy. From darkness, light. I'm gonna go grab him here. I can just replace that if he wants. What once was two now is one. What's the worst that could happen? What silence without a little risk? That seems pretty risky to me. We're able to uh, weaken his board a little bit. I love that health gain right there. Next turn, we get to play Karma. Karma plus Guiding Touch can really get us back into this game. That can always be hushed. trigger this at that but we can use this alongside karma next turn so I'm thinking is there any other play that I could use here no I'm just gonna pass my spirit is an unquenchable fire because now with karma we're gonna get to rebuilding this board we're gonna be using Calibrum here Combine this with Severum. The moon speaks of failures. You are its voice. You are Neo. <laughs> nice. We knew it would be so. Indeed. It's supposed to be a bad matchup, but because of Aphelios' flexibility, I I'm very happy with how I managed to stabilize that game. And uh, we didn't even draw the Veil Temple, which we definitely noticed uh, in that match. But uh, I I don't know. I'm just honestly, like, just happy with how I played that one. Like, we stabilized just enough, and we managed to get a really solid comeback. I think we made good use of Aphelios as well. 
And that was a really good example uh, of a game. I don't know. I'm, I'm happy with, with the video starting off like that, honestly. So let's go for round two. <laughs> really? Okay. It kind of sucks that it cues me into the same guy again, but whatever. I'm going to keep this hand because even the star shaping, even, even though it is a little bit early, having that health gain is absolutely crucial for this matchup and i do run star shaping as a two of in this deck so i'm not guaranteed to draw it if i'm only getting it away that's a good draw with closet dragon as well no one drop is fantastic we love seeing that i fight with my spirits not my fists well that's two for one trade that rummage could have gone a long way, so I'm, I'm honestly happy with that exchange. Time for the main event. Axis coming right up. Just send them into Calibre. I think uh, next turn is the turn to Veil Temple. down to eight I think I can we're gonna get Calibrum because we want to chain Calibrum into Severum next turn as we do find you beautiful I want to set up the Severum before I attack. I'm going to lose my Claws of the Dragon here. But I honestly think it's fine. I'm going to go Cosmic Inspiration. Now go with Severum. We thick and we mean gonna get that health back, baby. He could have a. Oh shit! Are you kidding me? Holy fuck! Wow. Wow. I really thought that was game set and match right there. What is game when you return malevolence? Okay. Well that makes things interesting. We don't have a celestial to go for the cosmic inspiration.
I'm fine with this. Am I? Yeah, because I'm, I'm able to set up the uh, the karma, which is really... Uh, but playing karma without backup is, is pretty no-no anyway, so... I'm gonna go for homecoming. I still have the uh, the nine enabled. Because I, re I really want to prevent his, his attack. He can't have more whirling death. Oh, he, he drew it again. Oh my god, dude. Sucks that I'm returning that one, but... Because it would be nice if I if I got the boost on this one, but whatever. But we're getting our health back anyways, even with that sneaky whirling that this guy just loves top decking Draven now. Okay, good. Back to 19, baby. I like that Will of Ionia a lot. Good. Even though we're, we were technically running out of gas. This is fine. Though. I mean, no, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna Will. <laughs> to get a sneaky kill on Karma. We'll bring peace to As we play another Karma right there with the boost from the temple to avoid another kill from get excited or any three damage spell. As it was meant to be. And we got him twice in a row, baby. Taking down aggro twice in a row. I guess I was wrong about the bad matchup. Cause the matchup does not seem bad at all. We have like a lot of healing, man. That's the thing. Like we, we he can take us down as much as he wants, but I'm really happy that we kept that star shaping in hand. But you guys saw like the there's a big difference. When you draw the temple, the temple puts in the work, and you can even justify it against aggro. A lot of top players were saying, well, once aggro decks get popular, the, the temple will be unplayable, and that's just that could not be anywhere further from the truth. The temple is really nasty. And I still feel like we haven't found the best way to, like, abuse it, right? But, uh, yeah. Let's see if we get a different matchup this time around, though. Okay, we got some Ionia on Ionia Crime. Lee Sin versus Karma. I don't mind because of Palm, but it's a little bit early for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop these two. As we do manage to find double Eye of the Dragon. That can be really neat. I'm not gonna attack because Pale Cascade could be a thing. I love that temple. Um, this is not Diana, right? It's, the, it's a few leaves. I'm going to get Gravitum. I'm expecting him to Calibrum, my Eye of the Dragon here. Yep. Play the Veil Temple. This will, uh, you know, at the expense of, of speed. He got Gravitum too, so we don't really need to. But there's nothing that he wants to Gravitum here. Uh, we want to use Veil Temple to also like make our Aphelios stronger than his. So he just goes for the Meditation. I like the Nopify here. Oh, 
no more Lisa in this turn, which is really, really important. I also love the fact that we have Karma here. The spirit gives to those who listen. I'm gonna have to pass here. Just because I, I don't have good units to play. Okay, I do like that that other veil temple though. So we're gonna try to ride this uh, double. We lose Aphelios, but we create space anyways. Um, we get to play you. Do we, we want to play you now? No, we want to do this. We'll bring peace to Ionia, whatever the cost. I'm, I, I play Karma because I, I want to play... I, I want to generate a card out of her. Flurry of Fist could be could be interesting. I don't think I can enable it though. But it's nice to have the card anyways. It it, it still allows us to push more damage. Actually, Flurry of Fist with Karma. Yeah! Ah, did 
Uh, did I, I, I? I may have made a mistake here. I'm going to try to eliminate Lee Sin here. I'm gonna go for the star shaping, uh, get myself the immortal fire. Conflict is all in the mind. Okay, there's Aphelios. I'm gonna go for the the Casa Palm now just to break the Bastion. Preserve the hush there for later to to do that. Unfortunately, our, our thing was denied, but we can we can utilize this next turn to try to level up Aphelios, set up the Immortal Fire, and see if how, how many concussive palms has my opponent played. He hasn't played a single one. He's played one at least. I know he's played one. Yeah, he's played one there. But that's the only one that I can see. He could have sworn he played two, but he's only played one. I think Inferno makes the most sense. It allows me to push more damage, right?
Is there anything I could pick up? I'm gonna calibre him. Keep it. I'll keep it on each end. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I interrupted you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, th I thought she just had one phrase. Whoo! All right. That was a dragged out game. Oh my lord, dude. Okay, but I, I do want to showcase a little bit more variety. So one more match and a different matchup than Aggro and like uh, and Lee Sin. I mean, that was a good match, right? But I, I would like one more. So let's go for the final one. Okay, so now we're facing Easy Draven. I mean, it's not very, it's not super different from the first two that we faced, but it is different. It's important to know that it is different. I'm gonna keep these Solar Priests. I'm gonna mulligan away everything else. That's it. You tried to find uh, the Temple, for example. If they're not playing Aftershock, the Temple can really help us outpace them. Eyes of the Dragon is Eyes of the Dra ah. Eye of the Dragon. English is always a nice sight to see. Early on in the match, I guess we can play her very, very quickly. Get the attune effect, the spirit gives those who and she's gonna provide us support both offensively and defensively. Unless she eats a thermogenic beam, in that case, she lived a short and tragic life. It's time. That's who we get. I'm gonna get the Traveler. I'm gonna take this hit. Preserving this uh, Sawyer Priestess for a more important blocking rule. I have healing anyways. And I'm gonna play you. I don't see why I shouldn't play double. I'm gonna hush and I'm gonna utilize the Traveler to take down Ezreal. If they have a Tribune and probably later, they played a total of three three drops already, so we gotta keep that in mind as well. Now we're cooking. Guess he wants to utilize the Axis to get rid of that, that's fine. Four cards plus Axe, alright. And thermal beam for that, alright. Just not finding the right. We're not finding the right tools here to get our. We we need some of our cheap spells, like our guiding touches and likes. I'm gonna go with the golden sister. Uh, tri beam. That's a four. That's a four power tri beam, which is concerning. God, I just, I really, I need, I need a, a cheap play. I need a, a pale cascade or like guiding touch. Something cheap, man. I have too many expensive spells in hand right now, and that's really hindering me. My opponent's running low on gas, but 
he's got all the momentum right now. Okay. I'm gonna trade with that. God damn it. I'm so good, I surprised myself. I thought you'd never ask. Guiding touch or pale cascade, like the odds are really high, right? <laughs> and then the Fire Nation attacked. Well, that's pretty sick. And now we enable the other the deep meditation. I mean, the odds the odds were like super high, right? Like at that point, I had to pick up something. And now we still have a blocker for Ezreal, meaning that if he wants to deal with it, he ha he needs another resource there. Okay, the, he he may be just like he may be preparing the. I can take this hit. I'm gonna hush and block to gain a little bit of health back. And now I'm gonna play Karma. I'm gonna big him not having an answer. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He could have a tribe even probably later. Oh, I just realized he's been building that up this entire game. Okay, never mind, never mind. <laughs> I was like, I fucked up. <laughs> Whoa. My spirit is an unquenchable fire. I could play Solar Priestess, but w w what am I gonna be aiming to get? I mean, I, I can get some cool stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this. I mean, even Rin stars is great. My opponent is super low on gas. I gotta make sure that I, I keep my... Yeah, this is fine. This is completely fine. with the elusive uh, put him low Breathe in, breathe out. 
I love that Nopify right there. We got more than enough defense. We got more than enough healing. We're in a great position right now. Uh, I took a big risk with Karma, though. If he had a Tribeam Prob Leader, she would have been donezo there. But now, like, me getting to, to untap at 10 mana with Karma, with this hand, is just the tits. If, if this doesn't happen for whatever reason, I can still blow this. dropping that. We're getting Severum. Just gotta make sure that Ezreal doesn't kill us. It's Ezreal versus Karma. But this burst speed healing is important because burst speed healing is not the end of be all. He can also kill me at burst speed. So I gotta make sure that I always stay relatively high here. We still have Deny enabled and, and Nopify as well. We're not gonna deny the Mystic Shot because he always needs to follow it up with something else. And we have Guiding Touch, Nopify, and Deny to counter whatever's coming after. That doesn't affect anything. Yes, exactly. So he drew that a little bit later, but not as not as late as I thought. Anyways, so now we're gonna go with Severum. Phased Infernum, which also makes, which also wins for us. Calibrum, so we're gonna do this here. We apply this over here. We have uh, Nopify for any sort of counter that you could have there. Knock him out, baby. Mm. As it was meant to be. Perfect. <laughs> I love that quote. And back to 300 after tanking my rank like crazy. Trying out decks that you don't even want to know. But uh, super happy with this uh, session. We had four games, four wins. Some of them we had to dig in pretty deep. And I didn't even showcase the matchup against Anivia Control, which is absolutely outstanding. Uh, honestly, this felt extremely competitive. And I'm, I'm super happy with uh, this variant of Aphelios Karma. Shoutouts to Homecoming. Like, super underrated card right now, after the buff. And shout out to the Veil Temple as well. What a menace of a card. I love it. I don't know. You know me. I just, I love playing Legends of Aphelios, the card game. And <laughs> just, I love spamming Emo Boy. What, what, what can I say? So, this is going to be the last video. Uh, in a, you guys are going to have, like, no videos for a couple of days at least. Because I'm going to be away uh, in Madrid. Because I, I am planning to move there this year. Uh, in fact, I'm planning to move there in, like, less than a month. So I have a lot of shit to do. I have to like find an apartment and everything. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't able to bulk record as much as I wanted to, but I think I should get, I should have had you guys covered for um, at least like Saturday, right? So 
yeah, I'll be back like in, in the week, like Monday or Tuesday, one of those two days. And uh, we'll be back at it. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the games. Leave a like. It helps out the channel. You know, self-promotion and stuff. I'll see, I'll see you around. <laughs>